For over 40 miles, Stevens Creek meanders through South Carolina's Sumter National Forest on its way to the Savannah River, flowing between McCormick and Edgefield counties. The creek ripples over a quarter mile stretch of rocky shoals. Ten months out of the year, this section of Stevens Creek looks much like any other creek. But come springtime, a spectacular display of large, showy, white flowering blossoms perched on 30 inch tall plants make their annual grand appearance. The spider-like flowers are Rocky Shoals spider lilies, a rare plant that thrives only in the swift, shallow currents of a few Piedmont waterways in South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama. Naturalist explorer William Bartram made the first recorded observation of the spider lily in 1773 when he found it growing in the Savannah River at the cataracts of Augusta. Well, way back in 2005, Dr. Uh, Ware, Donna Ware, had a student who wanted a research project. So she said to him, all right, you can go out, since you like to canoe, you can go out in the river and if you want to, you can measure the flow rate in the Augusta Shoals where there's an endangered plant species, the shoal spider lily. So uh, he did that. And so one day we were sitting having lunch in the biology department and, and Donna said to me, you know, I wish we had a population that has flow rates that aren't influenced by the Corps of Engineers. And I said, well, I know where there's a population there where there's natural flow rates and it's in South Carolina, east of Plum Branch, and I know who owns it, and I'll talk to them and ask them if they'll let us come up there and do research. So that's how we got involved with Bill Quinn and the uh, Shoal spider lily population that's up there at the mill. Dr. Bill Stringer recalls the Native Plant Society's first encounter with the plants at the property. The Parks Mill Project got off to a start with a phone call from a fellow named Bill Quinn, that uh, he indicated to me that he had a piece of property in, in McCormick County that uh, he would like to see preserved. And he felt like the Native Plant Society would be an excellent party to, to preserve this property. So Bill Sharpton, I got Bill Sharpton, he went down with me and we came onto the site. We saw a creek full of Rocky Shoal spider lilies, nice creek, uh, historical old mill structure, and we talked with Bill and, and a couple of his associates about what they would have to do and, and what they would and they would they would like to for us to buy the property and thus have it preserved. And uh, when Bill and I started back up the road, we had an entirely different take on the project than we did coming down. We agreed that we were going to have to get out somewhere and find the money to buy this place. Hi, my name is Bill Quinn. Uh, several years ago, around 1980, I and four other partners purchased Parks Mill Partnership. And uh, we've had it ever since. And uh, through the years, it has become obvious that it is now time to turn that property over to a responsible organization that will preserve the property and protect it. Um, I contacted uh, Bill Stringer and Bill uh, Sharpton several years ago and discussed the uh, issue with them and they assured me that they were after coming down to the property they assured me that they were interested in the property. It took us several years to work out the details but with tenacity and dedication and perseverance we finally have accomplished that goal. I've been knowing uh, Bill Quinn who was one of the previous owners of the Parks Mill property for a number of years and he told me a long time ago that he wanted to protect that area from development. And we've thought about ways over the years to do this. And it so happens that uh, the Native Plant Society got interested in this particular area. And they began talking with Bill. And he really wanted them to, to be in charge of managing it. And he wanted the Upper Savannah Land Trust to hold a conservation easement on it to make sure that it is protected in perpetuity. And uh, the Natural Land Trust got interested in the project and they obtained a grant from the Conservation Bank to purchase this property. So they own the property, the Native Plant Society uh, is going to manage the property and the Upper Savannah Land Trust 
uh, is going to make sure that it is protected in perpetuity from, from now on. The first time I visited the property, it was early spring, um, pulled up to the property, got out into these lovely um, oak, hickory, pine woods, um, meandered down to the shoals, um, and out of this sort of babbling water um, were these tiny green, green spikes of plants sticking up. Um, and they were small, not in bloom, but I could tell that this was a really special and, and very, very unique place. Well, when you see this site on Stevens Creek and you see these plants, you know it has to be protected. Um, not only is it beautiful, uh, it's an essential part of South Carolina's natural heritage. One of our, the largest unprotected population of one of our rarest plants in the state. And it really is a snapshot into what our ecology looked like uh, before the Europeans arrived in South Carolina. The challenge was finding a way to do it, and the Native Plant Society provided the leadership to get that accomplished. Fortunately, the owners worked with us. It took several years to get the legal process worked out, and in the end, we were so very fortunate that South Carolina's Conservation Bank was willing to step up and help the Native Plant Society and Natural Land Trust acquire the property. Uh, the effort isn't over yet. Uh, there are important aspects of protecting this property we still need to fund, uh, but working together, uh, the conservation groups in this area of the state, working with the Native Plant Society and the State Conservation Bank, have been able to put in place a way to protect one of the most important parts of South Carolina's natural heritage and our heritage of our beautiful native plants. In these few minutes you've seen and heard the story of the special place, the Parks Mill site, with its special population of the rare Rocky Shoal spider lily. We're very excited to be stewards of this site and look forward to protecting this population and having education programs at this property in the future. We also hope to do studies of this population and learn more about how to protect it and conserve it at this site and elsewhere in the state. We really would appreciate uh, your helping us financially with this initiative in any way that you can. Uh, if you want to learn more about this initiative, you can visit our website, scnps.org, or you can simply write a check to SCNPS Lilies at the address shown on the screen. We appreciate your support and look forward to hearing from you.